This is where it gets fun, the neuromuscular junction. So the junction between a neuron and a muscle, um, this is where an action potential is going to cause a neuron to fire, release neurotransmitter, and cause the muscle to contract. This is a type of synapse, the neuromuscular junction. Uh, I'm gonna show you one image, it's kind of a preview of what we're gonna see later of motor units. A motor unit is a single neuron and all of the muscle fibers that it innervates. So this purple here is innervating or connecting to all of the purple cells here. The green neuron is talking to all of the green cells. This is kind of a, a big picture view. These cell bodies of these somatic motor neurons are in the spinal cord and they are going to talk to muscles, muscle fibers. And then we'll come back to motor unit after we've talked about the details of the neuromuscular junction. Just wanted to give you this as a um, big picture view to start with. So we're gonna be zooming in to the action of one of these neurons at the muscle cell. So that neuromuscular junction. I'm gonna go ahead and make myself tiny here um, so that I can draw more. So neuromuscular junction, we have to have a neuron. This is the synaptic terminal of a somatic motor neuron, right? Somatic nervous system talks to skeletal muscle. I just showed you the other image that you can picture that the cell body of this neuron is in the spinal cord. And it's going to project out into the periphery to a muscle and talk to what a muscle cell. So here is a muscle cell or muscle fiber, same thing. There are these folds along the sarcolemma of the muscle fiber that's going to increase surface area when neurotransmitter is released from this motor neuron. There's um, these folds here for it to connect to. What is the space here? Synaptic cleft, right? The cleft is that space that makes up the synapse. A neuromuscular junction is a type of synapse. Cell uh, neurons can also synapse with other neurons or glands or other things. This is one specific type of synapse we're gonna talk about. So this should be review here. Inside the um, somatic motor neuron in that synaptic terminal, we've got, what is this? A vesicle. It's a vesicle that's filled with neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter of somatic motor neurons is always acetylcholine. You've heard of acetylcholine already, ACH. Um, this is a neurotransmitter. Chemical messenger that is released from somatic motor neurons. So when we have what causes this vesicle to be released, an action potential is going to travel down the motor neuron, something stimulated that. We're going to have calcium dependent vesicle release, meaning calcium is gonna flow into the cell because voltage gated calcium channels were triggered and cause this vesicle to fuse with the presynaptic neuron with the motor neurons membrane. This calcium here coming in, causing that, doop, doop, causing this vesicle to be released and thereby release neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. We've got neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft. What's that going to do? It's going to bind to receptors I'll make these a pretty, pretty pink. Why not? Receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. In this case, that's the muscle fiber. So this right here, I'm gonna label this. This is going to be a acetylcholine receptor. And I'm gonna tell you one more name for that right now. It's gonna be a nicotinic. What this means is that it also binds nicotine. There's gonna be another kind of, of ACH receptor we'll see um, with the autonomic nervous system. This is going to be a ligand gated ion channel. So that should make sense um, what that means. 
what a ligand gated ion channel means. The ligand that's going to bind it is acetylcholine. Um, there's a binding site. Um, I'm actually going to draw it here for acetylcholine to bind. Here's acetylcholine binding. This is all ACH molecules. When acetylcholine binds, it's going to open up that ion channel, right? That's what a ion channel does is it opens and allows things to flow down their concentration gradients. In this case, this ion channel allows sodium in primarily. Sodium is going to flow into the cell. Why? There's a huge drive for sodium inside the cell, to move inside the cell. You know that already. When sodium moves inside the cell, if enough moves in, so if threshold is reached, what do you think is going to happen? Well, an action potential can be generated in the muscle cell. Action potential. This is going to be due to the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels in response to this initial stimulus, just like we had with the neuron, okay? This action potential is actually going to move throughout the cell through those T-tubules. Um, I don't wanna draw that here just because I have enough detail here already. It's going to travel down to, let's choose another color here the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So let's just draw, I had it in blue in the previous um, video, so that's great. Our sarcoplasmic reticulum is full of calcium, that there is high calcium inside here. That's its job is to store calcium. So when the action potential reaches the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it's going to open voltage-gated calcium channels on the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Let's get another color here for our calcium channels here that are going to allow calcium to flow out. Why is calcium flowing out? Well, it's high inside the SER, levels are high, levels are lower inside the cell. So calcium is going to flow into the sarcoplasm of the muscle cell. High calcium inside the cell is going to initiate contraction. So this right here is the result of our action potential in the muscle cell. And We'll do the next video will be on coupling this excitation with contraction. Um, here we're gonna leave off with calcium release from the SER into the sarcoplasm to initiate muscle contraction. I want to show this with a diagram as well. It's drawn not by me. So here's that same thing here. Here is the kind of schem schematic of the motor neuron. It would be in the spinal cord. And we've got the action potential traveling down that um, axon that is then going to release neurotransmitter right here on the muscle cell where there is a muscle cell full of myofibrils. Those are going to be important. If we zoom in to, oops, let's ignore that for now. If we zoom in to this junction right here, we're gonna see the same thing I drew. What's different in this picture is you can really see how the action potential is going to travel down those T tubules, the transverse tubules, to come in contact with a lot of sarcoplasmic reticulum. This image, putting this together with this is helpful. Um, here's that T-tubule with the action potential traveling down. When that junctions, with, which is sarcoplasmic reticulum, that's gonna cause calcium to flow out. Calcium is going to flow from 
sarcoplasmic reticulum. I'm sorry, that's not right. <laughs> um, sarcoplasmic reticulum out, not into the detubule, into the um, sarcoplasm of the muscle cell, just like here. It's going to then contact these myofilaments and that's how it's going to be important and connect to contraction. 